welcome to the channel. Please make sure, like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all this stuff. But here's the question. B-16A Turbo, 4200 Amerabara Atlas Turbo, which one of them makes more power? That's actually not even the question for this video. The question is, which one of them is more efficient under boost? In this video, we're going to take a look at a comparison between a turbocharged 4200 Atlas Amerabara motor and a turbocharged Honda B16A. And while both of them make over 500 horsepower, we're really not looking at which one of them can make the most power. What we want to find out using the Holdner power boost formula and how much power these things make per pound of boost and some simple math, we want to find out which one is more efficient under boost. And the great thing about this, it isn't just a comparison between these two motors. Using this simple math, you can apply it to any boosted motor to find out if your combination is doing what it should. The first engine in our comparison is the 4200 Atlas inline six cylinder, we're calling it the Amerabara, and this was a 2005 version, so the later ones made a little bit more power, but this is again, this is a wrecking yard oh, motor yeah. that we got. And the only Geyser. change that we made to this, we're running with this with the Megasquirt MS3 Pro, so thank you guys for that and the, the ability to do that. But we ran this thing with a customized long tube header that we I had made by Jason over at JT Fab 77. It turned out that that particular header design didn't improve the power dramatically at this stock level compared to the factory exhaust, and nor really would we expect it to, but it allowed us to mount our turbo on there, which we did, and we ran it at various different boost levels. Before we did that, obviously, because this is a VVT motor, we tried it at various VVT levels, and this is where we got optimized power here. We ran the thing naturally aspirated with the, as I said, the MS3 Pro on it, which worked out very well. And this junkyard motor made 291 horsepower and 300 foot-pounds of torque with a nice flat, broad, like, torquer, which is really good. But here's what happened after we added our turbo setup. Starting off at 8.3 pounds. It's important to note that this combination was run with a low-buck GT45 turbo blowing through a Procharger air-to-water intercooler, and we would later use a different intercooler on the much smaller Honda. We also ran this combination on E85, and it's important to note because you're going to get a gain from the E85 all by itself. You're not going to get hardly any gain on the NA combination, so it's not going to elevate that, but it is going to elevate the boosted power number. So relatively speaking, the boosted power numbers are going to look better relative to the NA combination. That's important for the formula, so make sure to keep that in mind. But run at a boost of 8.3 pounds, our turbocharged 4200 Amerabara Atlas motor produced 483 horsepower, which if we calculate that out, and that was a gain of 192 horsepower over our baseline of 291 horsepower. And that worked out to 23.13 horsepower per pound of boost. So it was doing fairly well. And we would expect this of a bigger motor compared to the Honda, which we're going to take a look at. So the next thing we did was up the boost pressure to 9.8 pounds. And we got a solid gain everywhere. And at 9.8 our turbocharged 4200 produced 522 horsepower, giving us a gain of 231 horsepower. And at that boost level, that represented 23.57 horsepower per pound of boost. So again, right in that same range. So the efficiency was kind of staying the same at these boost and power levels. And our final run for the 4200 was at 11.3 pounds. We see a little bit of a dip there at the top, which we're still trying to figure out what that was, whether that's a tuning or VVT. Maybe it wants a different VVT, and we didn't try others um, at the higher boost levels. But that produced 555 horsepower, a gain of 264 horsepower over the NA motor, and that resulted in 23.3 horsepower per pound of boost. So it stayed fairly consistent on this 4200, which we like, but now let's take a look and really dive into this thing, looking at our whiteboard and get into some like boost math. But don't worry, it's pretty simple. Now we get to get into a little whiteboard math with the magic whiteboard. And we're going to go into this to find out how efficient this 4200 is. And then we can compare it later on, maybe to the Honda and figure it out. The cool thing is you can use this information and plug in the variables on any motor to figure out how well it's doing under boost. The first thing that I want you to look at at our whiteboard is down below and that is the power boost formula. 
if you want to know how much power and get a good estimate on how much power your motor is going to make at any given boost level, you can use this formula. And all you need to know is obviously the boost level that you plan on running. And then obviously the NA power output of the motor. Because everything that the boosted motor does is a function of the naturally aspirated motor multiplied by a multiplier of the boost, as we see here. So you take the NA power output and multiply it by the boost that you put into this formula divided by 14.5 because 14.5 is one atmosphere basically. So you can either have, if you plug 14.5 in there plus one, you'd get one plus one, which is two. You'd multiply the NA power times two and you could double the power output at 14 and a half pounds of boost. That's how it works. That's the function of this formula. You can also put any other number in there, 5 pounds, 7 pounds, 10 pounds, 20, 30, 40, 50, and then you get a multiplier and multiply the NA power up at times that. So let's, I'll show you how it works. First of all, in our first column, we have basically our NA motor, and then we have the different boost levels that we've run on that 4200. So we ran it at 8.3 pounds. We also ran it at 9.8 pounds. And then we also ran at 11.3 pounds, and all of the information for each one of those boost levels is given in this whiteboard. The next column is horsepower. So this tells us what peak horsepower the motor made at that given situation. So the NA motor, or NA4200, the 05 motor, made 291 horsepower. At 8.3 pounds, it made 483 horsepower. At 9.8, it made 522. And at 11.3, it made 555 horsepower. The next column is the gain. So how much did that boost gain us over the NA motor? Because we know that when we run the NA motor, we make 291. When we add boost, we're going to go up from there. So at 8.3 pounds, we gained 192 horsepower over the NA motor. At 9.8, we gained 231. And at 11.3, we gained 264 horsepower. So the next column is going to be the little bit confusing one, but it shouldn't be. It's really very simple once you grasp it. What we're looking at here is how much was that gain? So at 8.3 pounds, we gained 192 horsepower. What percentage is that gain of 192 horsepower compared to 291? How much did we go up? Like how much, what percentage did we improve that? So 192 is 0.659% uh, <laughs> or 65.9% uh, improvement in power. So if we multiply that now by 14.5, we can figure out what boost level that gain should come at. And then we can compare that to what it actually came at. Are we doing better than the formula? Are we doing worse? Are we doing the same? And in this case, that power gain of 192 horsepower should have come at 9.55 pounds, according to the math. So that tells us that, that that power gain should have came at a higher boost, and it came for us at a lower boost, which is good. In this case, it's a gain of 15% over the formula. So we're doing better than the formula. But again, some of that is definitely going to be the fact that we ran E85 on the boosted motor. But still, I like getting good gains over the formula. So at 9.8 pounds, that represented a jump in power. We improved the power by 231 horsepower. So compared to 291, 231 is points is 79.3% improvement in power. So what percentage is that of boost? So 0.793 times 14.5 gives us 11 and a half pounds. So again, what that means is our gain of 231 horsepower at 9.8 pounds actually should have come at 11 and a half pounds of boost. So we're under that, so we're still doing very well. In fact, we improved the formula by 17%. So it's still doing very good, even at the next higher boost level. So run at 11.3 pounds, we gain 264 horsepower. That's a 90.7% increase in power at that boost level. But that gain in power should have come at 13.15 pounds. Again, we're lower than that, so we're doing better than the formula. In fact, 16%. So on this 4200 Atlas motor, the gains that we were getting over the formula stayed fairly consistent. 15%, 17%, 16%, it's all right in that range. So at these boost levels, that 4200 was very responsive to the turbo, and it worked out very well. Now let's find out how well the Honda does. Just as we took a look at the Ameribera 4200, we're going to take a look at a modified B16A. This had four draws and forged pistons in it. It had flat tops, 9.2 to 1, 
had a mildly ported head and some stage two cams in it. it had a p30 intake manifold and we ran it with an apex long tube header obviously this thing was uh, dialed in we ran 36 pound injectors in it and then upgraded them after we put the turbo stuff on so run with this low compression cammed motor b16 it made 184 horsepower and 127 foot pounds of torque here's what happened after we added the single 57 millimeter garrett turbo and we ran this thing i'm going to go ahead and get rid of torque because it's going to be a little hard to see it's a little confusing and since we're going to use the horsepower numbers anyway to calculate these run at 9.4 pounds with this 57 millimeter turbo blowing through a spearco air to water intercooler and we ran race gas on this so that we could optimize the timing and air fuel we also ran this thing at 9.4 pounds it made 315 horsepower which was a gain of 130 horsepower and at 9.4 pounds that gave us 13.82 horsepower per pound and obviously we didn't stop there and went up and boost at 14.6 pounds it made 387 horsepower which resulted in almost identical 13.83 horsepower per pound we then went up and boost again to 20 pounds where it made 448 horsepower which dropped the efficiency a little bit 13.15 horsepower per pound and then our final run was at 24.1 pounds where this little b16 made 507 horsepower and that resulted in 13.36 horsepower per pound now let's take a look at our we're going to get a little more in depth into our math like we did with the 4200 so let's go to the whiteboard now that we've taken a look at the power graphs on the turbocharged b-series honda we can take a look at the whiteboard so let's get to that and just like with the 4200 we see we have different columns and the naturally aspirated motor run na on the engine dyno made 185 horsepower and then we have a listing of the different boost levels going down that we ran this b16 at 9.4 pounds 14.6 pounds 20 pounds and 24 pounds and then the next column just like with the 4200 is that we're listing all of the peak power output so 185 horsepower naturally aspirated and then 315 at 9.4 pounds 387 at 14.6 448 at 20 and 507 at 24 pounds and the next column really simple are the gains obviously there's no gain on the naturally aspirated one because that's our starting point but at 9.4 pounds we gained 130 horsepower at 14.6 pounds we gained 202 horsepower at 20 pounds we gained 263 horsepower and at 24 pounds we gained 322 horsepower now the next column shows us what percentage gain that was like how much did we gain at this given boost level and then we can compare the boost level as a percentage to 14.5 and see if they correlate did we gain more than the formula or did we gain less than the formula so at 9.4 pounds we gained 130 horsepower which is 70 percent of 185 and when we multiply the 70 times 14.5 we get this 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 power gain this 130 horsepower should have come at 10.29 pounds instead of 9.4 so we're doing better than the formula theoretically we should have required higher boost to make this power gain but we didn't so the little honda motor is doing well in fact we're bettering the formula by 9.5 percent at 14.6 pounds we had a 109 percent increase basically <clears throat> so we should have made this power gain of 202 horsepower at 15.8 pounds so again we're above the formula by 8.2 percent which is still good at 20 pounds we had 142 percent improvement in power that should have come at 20.59 so we're kind of right in there um you know 20.0 or 20.59 so we had about a three percent improvement there so our, our percentage is going down at least at 20 pounds and then finally at 24 pounds we had a gain of 322 horsepower which is a 174 percent increase and that should have come at 25.3 pounds so at, at a little bit more than one pound higher so again we're better than the formula which is always good equaling the formula is good being better than the formula even better so that was a gain of about five percent over this formula so it just goes to show you that on this application our little b16 with the right intercooler and right turbocharger just like with the 4200 did very well and was able to do better than the power boost formula let's get to our conclusion
Okay, guys, what do we learn from this little experiment taking a look at the uh, Atlas Amero Barrel 4200 under boost and then the little B16A Honda under boost? We learned the following thing. If we take a look at horsepower per pound of boost or we apply the Holdner power boost formula or use other simple math, we can figure out whether these motors are doing what they're supposed to do. Not only that, you can plug in your information to these formulas and figure out if it's really doing what it's doing. And if it's at the formula, if it's better than the formula, or if it's less than the formula, that gives you an idea to go look at why it's doing what it's doing. If you're doing better than the formula, look why. Figure that out so that you know you can duplicate it later on. If it's doing less than the formula, try to figure out why. Take a look at the turbo, take a look at the intercooler, take a look at the exhaust after the turbo. There are a lot of good things that you can look at. There's a lot of good information here, but as always, and this is why I always stress, I like to test a naturally aspirated motor before I run boost so that I can apply all of this information. The other thing that I didn't cover in this video that I should have, but this is very important and it should be obvious from using this power boost formula, you have to know the naturally aspirated power output, but stop being so concerned about what camshaft do I use on that motor? What cylinder head configuration do I use? What intake manifold do I use? Take your naturally aspirated motor, add boost to it, and good things will happen. I'm Richard Holder. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. I'll keep testing.